This is the Snowbiz Now Entertainment Network. It doesn't matter who you are, come and see it in Thailand. And that's just what they did in the thousands from all over the world to attend the largest gay event of its kind in Asia, the Nation Six Party, organized by Singapore-based Friday.com and hosted by Phuket's Hilton Arcadia Resort in Qatar. The festivity started with performances from Thailand's Rainbow Sky Association, a national fundraising group to prevent and educate against HIV infection. I'm here with Kun Ekapop, one of the full-time staff people with the Rainbow Sky Association of Thailand, which happens to be the only recognized organization serving the gay and lesbian community recognized by the government of Thailand. Congratulations on all the good work that you do, and, and welcome to the Nation Party. Please tell me and our audience uh, what it is that the Rainbow Sky Association does. Yes, thank you. Uh, about Rainbow Sky Association, we work about AIDS prevention. We will try to uh, retreat AIDS. Reduce HIV. HIV yes, uh, infection. And we work a lot about, uh, we have a lot of activity for, for do that. Mm -hmm. It's a party. We, we will try to send a staff for everyone. When, when you would like to ask something about AIDS, uh -huh, HIV AIDS, uh -huh, my staff can ask you many things and teach you about uh, use the correct condom. Correct condom uses, yeah. safe sex, yeah. HIV prevention. Uh -huh. Yes, actually we join with the Patong Hospital too. Uh -huh. That is uh, my partner. When we work in here, we will join with the Patong Hospital all the time. Well, I want to congratulate you on all of your hard work, and uh -huh. uh, I want to congratulate all the performers that have been donating their time. They are all volunteers who uh, are representing the Rainbow Sky Association of Thailand. When I arrived at the Nation Party, I was very excited to see this flyer everywhere, which announces that in conjunction with Patong Hospital, there's a clinic right here on the premises that is doing health-related screening. So I've come to the clinic, and I'm sitting here with Dr. Sandy Pop, who's going to tell us a little bit about what's going on at the clinic here this weekend. So we are the mobile clinic, all right? So we can, have, we can give, you, uh, give you the people who, who come here for the service of uh, the, the test. HIV test? HIV test, yeah, and also the sexual transmitted disease. And you're offering through the Nation Party the HIV test 24 hours a day, uh, yeah. and then the sexually transmitted disease screening happens during daytime hours. Yep, because uh, all these people, all right, they, they are best to, to get the HIV, so I think it's, uh, it's, most, it's important to get the prevention for all of them. And I want to encourage those people in our audience, if you have not been tested for HIV, get the test. If you're a sexually active adult male or female, it's good to be sure to practice safer sex, use condoms, and uh, test frequently. We've come over to the Phuket Orchid Resort where the W Nation parties have been taking place, organized by a long-known organization in Singapore, the two queens. And I have, I believe, one of the queens herself, Wendy. Are you one of the queens? Is it named after you and a business partner? <laughs> no, it's actually um, just a team that we came up with. We thought it was pretty cute. We call it the two queens party. Okay. With, with the pun intended, of course. Two queens itself has been set up for about five years. 
Uh, so before that, we were running previous parties, but uh, Two Queens only was formed about five years ago. Now, yeah. I know in Bangkok, and from what I understand in Singapore as well, the whole like Asian lesbian scene is really coming into its own. Would you agree? Um, I would agree, um, because I've been traveling a lot for the past few uh, weeks. And I must say that um, traveling to Malaysia, traveling to Thailand, I realized that scene is actually quite huge, and people um, are coming out a lot more out on the streets and even um, there's more places for girls to hang out as opposed to the past we really only had places for the boys to party. But the organizers of both the Nation and W Nation has, have gone out of their way to protect the privacy of the people who attend your events which is yep. understandable Yep. because not everyone can be out of the closet they, there's still sort of severe consequences if for some who could lose their jobs and in some cases they may live in countries where homosexuality is still, Ill still illegal, right? Um, yeah, pretty much that. I think for a lot of us, it's just the concerns about um, not letting our families know. Uh, also, more in terms of also our work, um, just for we just don't want it to be out in the open if there's actually no need for that. Um, so right now, I, I think it's just to play a bit safe. Yeah, girls just prefer a bit of privacy, just have their own little fun. So. And what do you think has been the best part about the W Nation participation this year? Um, I think it's actually the girls themselves because I think the girls themselves make it happen. For us, we're just doing the organizing. We let you know we set activities, and but at the end of the day, if they don't enjoy it, it would have been a failure. Uh, but we have got a very good group of girls this time. There's about 100 of them, and it's not too big a group. It's not too small a group, and them interacting with the other other nationalities, and you know they've been having fun every night. Um, it's it's really been good. I think in Singapore we are pretty much okay. Um, I think girls just prefer it to be a private thing. They just don't shout it out like the boys in that sense. But it's not that bad. Um, we are a conservative society, but not necessarily that traditional. So I think it takes a bit more time to build up that. And I think girls in general themselves, they just like it, you know, quiet. I'm here with Lisa C, who has been one of the DJs at the W Nation event, which has been run concurrently with the Nation Party. We really wanted to cover the women's perspective. I DJed at a club at the Hilton, and there were about 100 women, and they came mostly from Singapore, um, a few drop-ins from Thailand, you know, Hong Kong, Malaysia, etc. So we had women coming from all over Southeast Asia. It was great. And you've been a professional DJ for quite a while. How long? For 10 years. But actually, I was actually in retirement, and I haven't actually paid, played for three years. But the organizer of uh, Two Queens gave me a ring, and because I played at Nation's main set in 2003, I thought it was really, would be really interesting to come back. So, so what kind of music is really hot on the Asian lesbian scene? Um, there's, a, there's quite a, a gap between what women do like. I have to say that a lot of women do like a bit of hip-hop and chill-out music and stuff like that. But I've always been, I've always played house music. I've always played, you know, um, very sort of UK garage and stuff like that because that's my first love in Tribal House. Um, but I think I've figured out how to find that mid middle ground, you know. So I tend to drop a few really vocal classic tunes when I'm playing a, a hard house set or whatever, and um, that really works. I think you really do need to listen to your crowd. You can't sort of look down and just play the music that you want to play. You do need to play for the people. And I've identified that it is, yes, somewhat a little bit difficult to play for the women, but I think I've found that, that middle ground where you know, it, 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 it meets. We've saved the best interview for last in our coverage of the Nation Party. With me today, I have Dr. Stuart Coe, who is actually the founder and CEO of Friday.com, the business that's behind this great event. That's Friday, F-R-I-D-A-E. Stuart, welcome. Thank you. I was just asking you if you had any sleep this weekend because so much goes on. How many parties happen in a weekend of Nation Parties? Well, this year we've got nine parties um, between Friday and Sunday. Um, they, they range from pool parties to <coughs> big uh, ballroom parties to after-hours parties. So we've got nine DJs from uh, Europe, US, Australia, all over Asia. I've heard the news that this is the last nation party. Yes. Um, but when I found out the reasons, I was actually quite excited. You're really focusing into expansion of your web, web portals, but I want to know more about the web advocacy that you're going to be pursuing. Well, Friday was founded with the um, mission to empower gay Asia. And the events that we throw have always been an, a means to an end. Uh, what, moving back a little, 
When I attended my first gay pride event, the incredible sense of belonging and the sense of being part of a community was something that I was incredibly proud of. And, and that was something that was missing from the Asian scene. And so when we first started uh, organizing large-scale events such as Nation, um, part of the intent was to be able to bring people together and show them that there is a very large Asian gay community. Now we've already done that, you know, we've gone from 1,500 people up to a peak of 8,000 people. And I dare say that um, that part of Friday's journey and that part of Friday's mission. Now, I know you originally brought the party to Thailand because Singapore didn't want it anymore. And uh, how did that process sort of come about? And uh, how is it to be in Thailand once again? Well, when, when our events got um, banned, essentially, in Singapore for political reasons, uh, we were looking for a place to move our events too. And Nation was, was our flagship event. It was something that was very special to us. It was, uh, of all the events that we did, it was the most international. And so we were looking for a place that could embody that international flavor. Um, and Phuket was a natural choice for that because of its location, because of its infrastructure, its air connections. And when we came here to um, look at venues, we had incredible support, not only from the governor of Phuket, uh, the mayor of the, of the muni uh, municipality, uh, but also from the Tourism Authority of Thailand and uh, Phuket Tourism Authority. So it was, it was a very um, warm reception that we got in Thailand. And when we were asked last year if we would do it here again, it was a natural, I mean, there was no other alternative. I mean, we would definitely come back to Phuket, and that's why we're here again. Are you turning over this event to a friend of yours in business? Are you going to just let this kind of weekend in Thailand stop? Do you know, do you know what the future is? Um, this is it. This, this is it. This is it. Um, we're not passing it on to anybody else, and we're not going to reconsider in a few months' time. Uh, we've, we're calling this the final event, and it's going to be the, the final event. Well, one big gay party has just wrapped in Phuket, but I thought it would be very important to let you know about another really big event of interest to the gay and lesbian community from around the world, and that's Phuket Pride. We wanted to bring you this story in time to make plans to be here, and with me I have both the chair and co-chair of Phuket Pride, Kun Dang and Kun Daniel. Thank you for joining us. Oh, you're welcome. So, Kun Dang, why don't you give us a little bit of information about what people can expect this year for Phuket Pride. First of all, what are the dates of the event? Uh, 29 March up to 1st of April. Okay. The dates. And how many people are on the committee who are involved in producing this event? It's around, it was around 30 people. So lots of people, yeah. hard-working people. How many years has Phuket Pride been taking place? It has been seven years. And people from all over the world travel here for yes, the event? Yes, all over the world. Now, Daniel, I understand that you're making some changes in the way the entertainment is set up and presented. Is that we try to move more broader aspect. So it's we'll be moving more to a, not just a Paradise Complex this year's event, but also we we'll involve Paradise as well. There was also events on the beach, which where there's a beach foam party. They also have carnival. They also have a longer parade along the whole beach road. Now my energy got back, so I came back again to organize supply, and I hope uh, uh, I can push more energy for next year. All the pre-events and post-events, there will be a lot of things. So we, this year the objective is to expand, promote Phuket as a destination for the whole year and not just for four days. This is the Snowbiz Now Entertainment Network.